Hey folks, I'm Professor Darius and you're watching African Elements. Race is a primary way humans categorize one another based on physical characteristics such as skin color or hair texture. It's also one of the ways we develop our identities within larger society. In this video, I'll focus on two model frameworks for race in American society, from W.E.B. Du Bois to Jesse Jackson. All that coming up next. Thank you for watching African Elements. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, we take Black and Africana Studies content from the walls of higher education and bring it right here where the people are at. You can support this content for free just by leaving a like, dropping a comment below, and subscribing. Or for as little as a dollar a month, you can become one of the history makers in our growing Patreon community. Either way, I'm so glad you're here, so let's get started. First, let's be clear that there's no biological evidence that supports the idea that races are distinct from each other. In fact, the current scientific consensus is that race is nothing more than a social construct. Nevertheless, the reality is that race matters. It affects how people are treated, what opportunities they're given, and whether they'll live long enough to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Even though race is a social construct, people still use it to define themselves and others. People learn to see themselves as members of groups and cultures. A person's racial identity is defined by perceptions of oneself and by perceptions of what others think about him or her and by the cultural norms that surround them. According to a Pew Research poll, a majority of non-Hispanic Black Americans, 78%, say that being Black is very or extremely important to how they think about themselves. Understanding how the notion of race shapes our identities and experiences is essential to understanding racism and discrimination. No single model explains how we develop our racial identities, but here I'll focus on two models, intergroup contact theory and self-categorization theory. Intergroup contact theory suggests that contact with members of another racial group leads to positive changes in attitudes towards marginalized groups. Pioneering black sociologists sought to understand how African Americans fit into the larger fabric of American life. Emerging in the post-Reconstruction period, these pioneers were motivated by the desire to assess the impact of the rapid changes they experienced during the period of post-Civil War Reconstruction from 1865 to 1887. In the early tradition of black sociological thought, African Americans were outside the norm in reference to social science research. As a result, the standards for evaluating their cultural and social organization were in comparison to white society, and black sociologists were largely trapped within that framework. William Edward Burghardt Du Bois was an American historian, sociologist, and civil rights activist who played a major role in the advancement of African Americans. As founder of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Du Bois gave rise to an unprecedented movement for African American equality. He focused largely on issues of class and education as a means to gain racial equality and civil rights for the black community. His writings on race relations and civil rights became influential throughout the discipline. In his best-known work, The Souls of Black Folk, he wrote extensively about the problems black Americans faced in the post-slavery era, yet he opens his essay by framing his otherness in American society. Between me and the other world there is ever an unasked question. Unasked by some through feelings of delicacy, by others through the difficulty of rightly framing it. All nevertheless flutter around it. How does it feel to be a problem? I seldom answer a word, and yet, being a problem is a strange experience. Another prominent social thinker, Anna Julia Cooper, was an American educator, writer, and activist who promoted black women's education in the United States. She wrote about the history of African Americans and their contributions to society. Much like Du Bois, she stressed inclusion as a pathway to prosperity. The increasingly more complex industrial order in American society, she argued, would reach its fullest potential only by including African American men and women into the citizenry and allowing them to participate fully in social, political, and economic realms of life. Intergroup contact theory was important in framing a way forward after emancipation. 
However, it left sociologists to consider the black experience narrowly and solely focused on achieving parity with white America. Consequently, many early sociologists frame black culture as underdeveloped and needing social reform. Their narrow focus left little room for exploring the creative capacities of the black community both culturally and socially. On the other hand, self-categorization theory states that individuals categorize themselves into groups based on shared characteristics. A significant turning point came in the 1920s and 1930s when Harlem became a thriving cultural hub largely due to the arrival of thousands of black Americans fleeing racial oppression in the Deep South. The influx of black migration into New York City began in earnest in 1917. By 1914, nearly a half a million blacks had left the South for northern cities. Harlem, a neighborhood once home to wealthy white residents, became a haven for black artists, writers, and musicians. For black residents, Harlem was an opportunity to experience art and thought centered on the black experience for the first time. It represented the opportunity to uphold the black experience through the eyes of black people themselves as complex figures with real lives. With it came the concept of the new Negro and that the modern African American could free himself from the negative stereotypes to assert his own identity, that African American culture could be defined through the arts. One of the major figures asserting this new identity was Langston Hughes. Born in Joplin, Missouri in 1902, he moved to New York City in 1918. In his essay, The Negro Artist and the Racial Mountain, he boldly proclaimed, So I am ashamed for the black poet who says, I want to be a poet, not a Negro poet, as though his own racial world were not as interesting as any other world. I am ashamed, too, for the colored artist who runs from the painting of Negro faces to the painting of sunsets after the manner of the academicians because he fears the strange unwhiteness of his own features. An artist must be free to choose what he does, certainly but he also must never be afraid to do what he might choose. Later, the 1960s constituted an essential movement in the history of black activism in the United States. In the wake of the Civil Rights Movement, many blacks began to redefine and recreate what it meant to be called black. They did so by demanding dignity and human respect for themselves and others. Being black was about the right of self-naming, being able to define oneself without having to rely on others to do so. The term being black became synonymous with being proud, strong, powerful, and dignified. As civil rights activist Jesse Jackson asserted before a crowd in 1963, I may be poor, but I am somebody. I may be in jail, but I am somebody. I am Black, beautiful, proud, I must be respected, I must be protected, I am somebody. The early traditions of black sociologists based their assumptions largely on the notion that whites were the norm and blacks were the deviant. The central focus was on gaining equality with whites such that blacks were accepted into the norm. Later frameworks of African American culture attempted to better understand how black people resist oppression and how they reconstitute their lives after suffering from oppression. The suppression of this idea left black sociological studies narrowly focused on making them equal to white Americans. I'm Professor Darius, and if you're still watching, maybe consider joining the history makers in our Patreon community who make it possible for me to continue to make this content. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to become a history maker, you can join them for as little as a dollar a month. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the comments.